Heavenly Father, we are mm. so thankful for mm -hmm. this group, for this opportunity to get together and mm -hmm. to hear from you, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that you would just prepare our hearts to mm -hmm. hear the word that you have deposited into Henry's heart, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, your anointing would be all over him today. Yes. I pray also, Lord, that um, the church um, would have a successful day at the park. Mm -hmm. I pray, Lord God, for their safety while they're there, that nobody would get harmed and that mm -hmm. there would be no um, evil amongst them. I pray, Lord, also that you would just um, multiply our group, bring more people here that need to hear about your love, mm -hmm. about your grace, Lord yes, God, Lord. about just how compelled you are, Lord God, mm -hmm. by love, mm -hmm. that you just continue to to forgive and to um, shower us with love and, mm -hmm. and affection. So, Lord, help us, Lord, to be more like you <coughs> and not to be so um, mm -hmm. quick to condemn or so quick mm -hmm. to want to wanna put distance between us and those that aren't comfortable to be around. But, mm -hmm. Lord... Um, Give us a heart of love mm -hmm. and compassion and, and grace, mm -hmm. I pray, in Jesus' mm -hmm. precious name. Amen. Amen. Let's open up with Isaiah 40. I love Isaiah. Isn't he great? There's so many prophecies yeah. in there that speak to, to us. Oh, to, to, if we could look back and read it from the New Covenant, there's a lot of things. Whenever you read in the Bible and you read it, it says, like, um, do you remember what that psalm is that, that Andrew Womack used to break down as saying that, we're saying that if you do this, if you do that, if you do this, if you do this, then I will be merciful unto you. And it's in a bunch of ifs, you do this. And then and then he says, this is how you should read that from the new covenant, as a new covenant believer. And he read that that whole psalm. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that whole, I think it was a, a chapter. And he said, because Jesus did this, because Jesus did this, because Jesus did that, because Jesus was obedient, because he did this. Uh -huh. I, I, we are blessed and we get all this this blessings is because Jesus 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 <laughs> and he redid the whole the whole thing Oh I didn't Remember? hear that teaching yeah Okay there was yeah. he broke down one it was like talking about all these things he says now as a new covenant believer how we read that should be totally different like he was asking me about the Lord's prayer mm -hmm. and about praying the Lord's prayer and I hear people all the time they pray mm -hmm. that Lord's prayer still today I go we go to um the, um, the bridge in mm -hmm. one of the ministers there at the end that we all get around in a circle and whenever he teaches he always ends with that prayer, but what I was explaining to um, to Peace, Peter yeah. that um, that that's an old covenant prayer. That's that that's a prayer that was totally fulfilled in Christ. Mm. He says, okay. "Give us this day our daily bread." He said, "I'm the bread of life." That bread, you know, I'm that bread. He says, do, 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 um, uh, "That we might do." Um, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. His kingdom came. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. That's, that's, that the kingdom has come. And he says thy will be done as it is in heaven. Well, Jesus came down here. He did the will of the Father in yeah. everything he did he, perfectly. It says forgive us our sins as, as, as we forgive others. Well, Jesus forgave us our sins so that we can forgive others. You know, we forgive with the forgiveness we've received. So that's, it's a whole different program now. You see, so everything in the Lord's prayer was fulfilled in Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's not even a prayer that we should be praying. I mean, do you really want to pray, Father, forgive me in the same way, identical. You know, don't bother forgiving me unless I've really forgiven everybody completely, 100%. Give, forgive me in the same way that I forgive others, Lord. You, if I withhold in any way, shape, or form any for unforgiveness, any, if I'm vindictive in any way, you treat me that way. Yeah, right. Is that something we should be praying today? Yeah. No. No, we should be thankful and grateful for what he did in paying for my mm. forgiveness. Yeah. Mm. It should be a total different approach. Hmm. You see, I was thinking because we have a sin nature, we're in these bodies, we were, you know, born of sin that you know, but we, we are always a new creation now. Right. Yeah. No longer of that. That's not you. You're not we just an old sinner saved by grace. Okay. You're you're a, yeah. you're a saint who sometimes sins. But Correct. you're a saint, hundred okay. percent, in the spirit, and that's how God deals with us. We right. must worship Him in spirit and truth. That's how I approach God, and that's why the Bible says we shouldn't even be sin conscious because in, in the garden, in, in the garden, that sin consciousness. You know, some translations translate that that tree okay. in the garden. There was two trees that they could eat from: the tree of eternal life and the tree of, of good and evil. Some translate that tree of good and evil as being the tree of conscience. Okay, they didn't need that. Okay, there's no conscience of good and evil because everything was good, everything was perfect. They didn't need to eat from that tree. So that we, what we have today is we're not supposed to be going and eating from that tree of good and evil, the tree of conscience. We're supposed to be eating from the tree of eternal life, which is eating from Jesus Christ. He said, I'm the vine. You connect to me, 
right? So we're supposed to be eating from that tree and that tree only. Right. Don't eat from that tree of sin consciousness. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's the wrong tree. We, we don't, and he prepared a way that we can eat from the tree of eternal life again by feeding on Jesus and eat on me. My bread, my body is real bread. Jesus eat Christ. on Jesus Christ. He is, the, he is the vine. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's eternal life. Right. So he is that tree, the vine of eternal life. We're branches. He's the vine. He's the tree of eternal life. And we eat. he says, eat of me. I'm the true bread from heaven. Okay. So we're supposed to be eating of him. And when you eat of him, you're, he, you're, you're eating from the tree of eternal life. That's all you need. Great. You don't need to be eaten from any other tree. Mm. Got it. Isn't that good? good yeah, it's great man. because, it? uh, I, you know, it is. in the car, I was praying the Lord's Prayer. And now it's like, oh, okay. All right. So that's just something that is a revelation to me now well, well, that I that don't need to do. That's good. So, Let's look yeah. at Isaiah 40. Look what it says. This okay. is this is a this is this is a scripture for John the Baptist. This is what John the Baptist should be preaching to people. This is his ministry. Okay. And he says... Say to my people, comfort thee, comfort my people, says the Lord. Comfort them. Comfort them. Mm. Don't torment them in their spirit and say, no, you sinners. So he wasn't preaching what he was supposed to Yeah, huh? John the Baptist wasn't preaching. Look, read it. You know, yeah. Don't jump to conclusions. Read what it says, okay? Yeah. Because he did preach this. He said, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He was preaching oh, this. Oh, he was being disobedient. No. Okay. Because he was preaching. No, uh, he, was message, preaching. Was he was pointing people to Jesus. He said, I came okay. to, to make the, the, the valleys low, to make the mountains low, to set, open the valleys, make a clear, let's make a pure class for Jesus. Come on, let's open the way for him. He was totally introducing Jesus, the oh, forgiveness okay. of sins, the Lamb of God who takes him away. He was doing that. But what is he saying? He's saying, look, Speak comfort ye, comfort ye, comfort my people, says the Lord. Now go to, because mine says it a little different, my NIV. I okay. want to go to King James, because he says specifically that the warfare is over. That's where the, the war is over. Any animosity between you and God, anywhere where you're an enemy, and he's, you know, it, it, there's wrath and there's f fear of punishment. Yeah. The Bible says there should be no more. Perfected mm. love, there should be no more fear of punishment. The Bible says that Jesus, <laughs> if, he, if, he died, if, he died, if he if he died for you, well, then he's surely going to save you from all of his his wrath. And we read in Isaiah 54, where he will never be angry with you again. Right? Mm. Yes. Okay, so. Now, does this apply still then to, to the Jews? Or only to those that have given their life to Christ? You know, Absolutely. I'm wondering, because it says comfort for God's people. You know, and then it's well, he's speaking tenderly to Jerusalem. Yeah. And Introducing a Savior. Sure. Introducing a Savior. Speak yeah. to them comfortably, saying, listen, your salvation is secure. The warfare is over. God's not mad at you. That's what the angels were singing when they came and they were singing, when they were singing to the shepherds in the desert. And, 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 and the angels were singing, Jesus was being born in, in Bethlehem. And the angels were singing. They said, God, goodwill toward men, uh, uh, peace and goodwill toward among men. Uh, it says, uh, peace on earth. Glory, glory, glory to God, God and peace heart. on earth. Peace on earth and goodwill toward men. A lot of people take that to mean that goodwill among men. But Jesus mm. said, don't think that I came oh. to, hey, how are you? Sit down. Right. Come on, join us. Hey. Hey. Amen. Hey. Please. Hey. Please. Hey. Please. Hey. Please. Hey. Okay. Oh. Well, that's okay. Yeah. We're, in, we're inviting you. Oh, yeah. We got, we got bagels. Yeah. There's, There's coffee like and everything. Okay. Okay. Excellent. That's really good. Yeah. Got to get something in there. There's hot tea over there, too, if you want it. My name is Carlos. What's your name? I'm Thomas. 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 I'm Dylan. Very good. Nice to meet you. What? I'm Rich. Rich. Nice to meet you. No, we're going to go My wife's Andy. Andy. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and we'll wait yeah, for you. Go yeah, yeah, I'm Henry. I'm Joe. Yeah, I'm Dylan. Dylan and Carlos. Yeah. Peter. Peter. Oh, Carlos. Sorry. The one thing no. I would yeah, like you to do. Yeah, take your time. It's okay. In, in, uh, in the context of what we're talking about, is to sh bring us the balance that you, that you see in the epistles that talk about uh, uh, confessing even our faults one to another and mm. forgiving one another uh, and then even you know you also have uh, the other scripture I think it's in Corinthians where you're talking about if if somebody is overtaken in a fault or no that's in the Gospels well you're supposed to go to them you know and then if if, if they don't receive you then to take yet another right you know right and so I, 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 is there is there some more context there uh, that we need to think about just to in balance 
I, I'm, because I think, am I right? I see what you're saying, am but I, right I, I, know, I know exactly you're what you're saying. And, and that is there. It's in all the letters. I mean, toward the end, he talks about that. You're addressing salvation and that there's no way we can work for it. But we know that when we get saved, the automatic thing that comes out of it are, are good deeds and works and whatnot that are inspired by the Holy Spirit that change our lives. Mm -hmm. But what about, like say, when somebody gets overtaken in a fault or these other scriptures that are in the epistles that, you know, uh, Paul and John and the different ones are saying, confess your fault to one to another. Well, that's why he says that he puts his laws in your heart and your mind. And that's why it says that he works in you to will and to do his good pleasure because he actually works in you to do, like myself, I've broken free from profanity and drug addictions and all these things. I mean, so many things that I've broken free from, you know, a criminal, totally criminal lifestyle, totally broke free from it. And, and you know, I didn't do it focusing on what a lot of people think you should focus on. Yeah. Really read a lot about your sin and see what's wrong with you and what I need to fix. No, right. You, right, you know, right, that, right. That, that takes you off and it, that gets you sin conscious to where you, it just happens. All I can say is when you focus on the love of God, the Bible says, it even says in Ephesians chapter 3, it says, I pray that you would just realize, that, recognize how wide, how deep, how long, how, 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 how pure God's love is, that you might be filled with the fullness of God. That's where you get the fullness of God. Yeah. Focusing on that love. Yeah. It just happens. You can't. You you please God more accidentally than you ever could on purpose. Trying to fi fix mm. this and fix that and try and make. I need to change that. I need to do this. It's just going to happen. And I see what you're saying. There are other things to go to, you know. But what's important is like um, the seed. There's a story about the seed. You know, in Matthew chapter 13, it talks about the seed. Different sowers planting that seed, right? And talk about the the, the, the soil is different hearts. But what it says very important, I sh we should go there, but I want to finish with this. What we should go is, is it says that for those who this, who, who no understanding, if you don't understand, that devil is able to take that seed away. For those who don't understand, it says the evil one comes in, that's the seed, there was a seed on the path, a seed on the rocky ground, the seed in front of the weeds. But it says that the devil comes and steals that seed, that there's, it, 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 there's no understanding, he even ends that saying that for those who don't understand, he says, he's, it, it, it mentions that again, actually twice at the beginning and the end, we should look at it, but it says twice. At the yeah. beginning and the end, it's your understanding. Yeah. Understanding what? How, your identity. Who you are as a child of God says, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. There's freedom there. Yes, we don't use that freedom to indulge the flesh, the Bible yeah. says. So of course we don't indulge the flesh, of course we yeah. don't. But you gotta grow into that. That's a process of growth. And the reason I land on this so much, and we will go there, definitely, and you will see, but it'll all start to make sense. You're going to find yourself pleasing God more accidentally, just focus, going where I'm taking you. You're going to say, you're going to say man, I can't do that. You know, that's just wrong. You know, yeah. I don't roll like that. That's not me. You yeah. know, I don't, you know, it just, it just I, I don't know how to say it, because that's how I did it. I didn't do it reading a whole bunch of, I read this, you read your Bible, you're going to see this stuff. What yeah. you're saying, don't return evil with evil. On the contrary, return evil with good. Bam, that says a lot right there. Yeah. Don't treat people the way they treat you, and on the contrary, you treat them the way you want them to treat you. That, that's right there, all of it. Yeah. What you're saying is in that one. He says, if you really love somebody, you said a few weeks ago, if you really love somebody, you're not going to lie to them, you're not going to steal from them, you're not going to do any of that stuff if you really love them. Focus on the love of God, and that love will manifest in you. Yeah. That's what I'm saying about, you know, if you really understand the love of God, how wide, how deep, how long, how, mm -hmm. how huge it is, you'll be filled with the fullness of God. Yeah. That's where it comes, and you just, that's why my focus is on the love of God, because I know that's how I broke free from my junk. Mm. That's why I don't go to prison anymore. That's why I don't swear anymore. That's why I'm not mean and cruel and vicious and violent and hating on people and them hating me. I, I'm not living there anymore. I totally stepped so far away, and now it's like I'm flown. What, what do I love talking about? The love of God. Yeah. The grace of God. That's, that took over, because that's, that's what I communicate now. And there's that testimony you see? there, too. Yeah that I've heard, you know, I've even heard you, and I'm, I'm careful to try to do it myself, to say, hey, you know, this is where I was, uh, but this is where I am now, and that's part yeah. of the identity change that happens, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that confession of, of your faults, ah, I, I did this, I did that, I went to jail, blah, 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 I was in this many jails, and so on and so forth, but now, you know, and that, it's like part of your testimony, mm -hmm. uh, and I think, whether in that scenario or my own little scenarios too, where I know, oh man, 
I screwed up. I don't think it's bad or wrong. I, I like the idea of saying, hey, Sandy, you know, I, I, I'm sorry I did this or that. And it just, it's like, puts it out there in transparency. But it doesn't change my identity either. Yeah. In fact, it helps me grow through whatever it is that I might have well, stepped into. What I'm trying to do is convince yeah. all of us yeah. who you are in Christ. So you will live that out. Yeah, that's it. That, it's pretty much, it's really that simple. The Bible talks about the simplicity that's in Christ. It's pretty simple. It's pretty basic. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not complicated. Yeah. You just need to realize that I am 100%, you are 110% Christian. You are a child of God. God. He's daddy to you. Okay? Daddy. Can't get away okay? from that. <laughs> yeah, and, and he doesn't live out there somewhere. You don't pray, hey, please, Lord. You, people bow their head because God is right here. You don't have to go out there praying, trying to work in, break, break, through, break through to heaven, try and get him to, to respond. You're his child. You come knowing he hears. The Bible says if you know his will, if you pray, anytime you pray his will, you can know he hears you. If you know he hears you, you know you're going to get what you ask. That's the only criteria to, to get an answer to prayer. Pray his will. When I don't know his will, just end your prayer with, not my will, your will be done. You just prayed his will. Abba Father. Yeah. Abba Father, Daddy. And you are, you are, you're never going to be more holy than you are right now. You're never going to be more righteous than you are right now. You're never going to lose that righteousness. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. 100%. And the more you realize that, you realize, hey, you know what? I am a priest. Let me go act like one. Let me go be a priest. It just happens. It's God putting his laws in your heart and in your mind. It's God working in you to will and to do what pleases him. It's grace teaching you to, do, to, to say no to ungodliness or worldly passions and to live self-controlled godly lives. It's grace doing that. Let's talk about grace then. If the Bible says grace does it, let's, let's talk about grace because that's what's going to do it. It says the Holy Spirit, he teaches you, it guides you into all truth. Says he teaches you and reminds you of those things he's revealed to you. He does that. Let's talk about the Holy Spirit. Let's talk about the, what does the work, how it happens, who's doing it. Not me. Christ in you is the hope of glory. That's good. That's where I go. That's why I'm pumped about this. I'm fired up, and everybody wants to talk about sin and talk about this and talk about that. We'll get there. You'll see it. If you're reading your Bible, you'll see it. It'll. I mean, you'll see it in you more than you see it here. <laughs> Holy Spirit's going to make sure of that. But he's not going to hammer you for it. Okay. He's not going to bug you about it. He's not going to torment you about it. He's not going to condemn you for it. He's not even going to convict you. Char guilty as charged. Right. Convicted. And sentenced. No. Yeah. He's gonna, your spirit is going to be grieved by the Holy Spirit. You're going to grieve your spirit about it. You're not going to be comfortable with it. Mm. You know, I shouldn't true. have treated him that way. That's wrong. Yeah, let me call him back. I've done that with you, Dylan. Yeah. You've on your case. I call you right back and say, you know, Dylan, you know, I, 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 that's wrong, man. Uh, you know, that's Holy Spirit stuff. It just turns you around. You talked about it a few weeks that, ago. Right. It's the Holy Spirit. You, you right. don't, don't, and that's what you were saying, which makes you grow. Yeah. Don't dismiss yeah. the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, man. Yeah. Don't minimize the power of the Holy Spirit in a, in a born again believer. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's where I go. And doesn't it kind of pump you up to want to hear more of that? It's like, okay, okay, now, now, now I'm glued in. Now I'm keen. You got my attention. Okay, tell me more. Well, let's look. How, how does it say, verse 40? It says, comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, says your God. Can I say something? Yeah. I'm, what's your name? Henry. Henry. You're the one who gave the testimony about yeah. being in 29th. Yeah, let me, yeah, heard about that. They, so let I, me go up there yeah. last week. <laughs> that was beautiful. That moved you. <laughs> which, which, yeah, yeah. And, and the sister told me that you're leading a study here. So she? Here. Yes, oh. right. um, but where anyway, was that? What, I want to say. Where was that? Where was that? Last, last week. week. Last, last week. week. He, he did last something he doesn't normally do. The pastor? Go, go ahead. Oh. Yeah. No. I, uh, okay. He did something he doesn't normally do. He oh. asked people, three people, he asked people, three people in a, in a to come up and give a little short testimony. Not a sermon, but a little yeah. short testimony. And, and right away my hand went up. I'm, I, I always got something <laughs> to say, you know, yeah. my hand, because I got the, no. probably the biggest testimony in here, man. No. No. If you knew me, where I've been. Oh, okay. You know, I, I, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. I, you know, <laughs> I'm glad you said not to give a sermon. <laughs> you were a guy. Don't overshadow me. <laughs> Take over the church. That's why he said that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Wait, wait. <laughs> what a <laughs> testimony this is. Yeah, see, I see yeah. Heard, I recently heard a pastor say that um, it was really powerful. Like, if you think about the disciples before the Holy Spirit filled them, and he uses his own word, but 
he said they were kind of idiots. I mean, they made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> they did not know how to follow Jesus. They were like, they, you know, and Peter, mm -hmm. the lead apostle, denied, denied Jesus three times, right? Mm -hmm. After he said, I'm not going to deny you, I'm going to die for you. But then what really was impressive to me, and it's kind of going what you just said, is that. But then after the day of Pentecost, they were different men. <laughs> when they were filled with the Holy Joe, Spirit. Don't even were, try were, ministry without him. That's idiots. how much that's yeah. how much you didn't need to look at yeah. him. Yeah. And don't even try and minister without him. And so Peter got up, his very first sermon, three thousand came to the Lord. Yeah. But not because of him. You're right, not because of Peter. The Lord added because to the church the because Spirit. the Holy Spirit. So that's that's the contrast. And and I and I, I never saw it so clearly that like what a difference, you know, with, without the Spirit, these guys, yeah. they're well-meaning people, they're, they're well-meaning disciples, trying to be disciples, but when the Holy Spirit fell, yeah. um, and I said, I've been looking at that passage, Acts 1-8 says, and yeah. you, should, you, you know, you're yeah. walking by, like, <laughs> and you shall receive power when yeah. the Holy Spirit yeah. shall yeah. come upon you, yeah. and then you shall be my witness. And then, Don't yeah. even try to be his witness. Well, you can't, right? Yeah, you right. can't. You're going to fail. Because the, yeah. the, 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 he says, yeah. I have not given you the spirit of, of fear and timidity, but a spirit of love. Amen. There it is. That's the spirit in you. And the fruit, number one fruit of the Holy Spirit is love. Yeah. Right? That, it's, it, it's something in you. God put his laws in your heart and your mind. It's there. It's there. It's, you, got, you just got to key your mind to what's there. Amen. You, you'll see the contradiction between what love is and what isn't. Oh, yeah. It's going to come because he's there. The love is there and you're going to see the contradiction. It's not going to fit. It's going to mix. Mm -hmm. yeah. And boldness. Yeah. Bold. Yeah. yeah. Of the fear of love, of power and sound yeah. mind. Yeah. That's where the sound mind. comes from. from the Holy Spirit. That's all the spirit. And the sound mind. He is the power. Not, you're just not like rambling. Yeah. And, yeah. and I love like what you said about, what, what you got to understand about Peter? I love what you said about Peter. Well, a lot of people don't realize what, 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 what Peter, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus knew Peter was going to sin. He said, you're going to deny me three times before there's a day. Peter says, oh, I'll never leave you. I'll fight for you. I, you know, and he, he says, yeah, right. Peter, listen, before this day is over, you're going to deny me three times. Yeah. Okay. So he denied him. And in the midst, in the middle of denying him, he looked over and saw Jesus looking at him as he denied him. Okay, now wow. get this, yeah. and, and then after, afterwards, Jesus was on the boat and he called him to him. Uh, I mean, uh, he, Jesus was by the boat, they went back to fishing, they went back to the old employment, and they started fishing, and Jesus on the ground, and he calls him, I, I, I mean, and, and, and John says, it's the Lord, when he told him, hey, give him another catch of fish. John jumps into the water, swims to Jesus, okay, wanted to be close to Jesus. And Jesus takes him aside and he says, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And he keeps him three, three, he says, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. So he was committing him to ministry. Okay? Peter, right? Yeah. But listen, Peter, yeah. Peter. now he knew he was going to sin. Yeah. And he loved him. Yeah. Did ch change his love for him? No. As he sinned, right as he was doing it, he looked over and saw Jesus' look of, of love. Yeah. Mm. Loved him as he did it. Yeah. Mm. As he did it. Come on. Okay. Come and on. then afterwards, when he gave him the commission to go and minister, nothing's changed. Matter of fact, dude, you learned you grew through this. Yeah, I he still love you. Even bring it up. Now you're going to be my, my preacher. <laughs> Three thousand people are going to get saved in a few weeks because mm -hmm. of you, because he went through this. Yeah. yeah, he loves you before, during, and after Amen. you sin. That's a good Amen. point. Thank you. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> wow, oh. good stuff. Good. While we were yet undone. Oh, wow. Well, right. Yeah, he died for you when you were enemies. How much more he loves you now? That's yeah. <laughs> what the Bible says. Hmm. Yeah. Jump back. Jump back. <laughs> Dude, see why I want to. See why I want to go. Like, see why I'd rather go here. Because there's much to learn here. Woo. Yeah. Much to learn. The people are missing it. Yeah. And if they got that part, dude, the rest would just come. Because you do it mm. from a want to rather than a have to. Mm. Most people think they still right. have to keep the Ten Commandments. We still have to go to church. We still have to read our Bible. We still have to, have to, have to. Dude, maybe you have to. <laughs> I, want I want to. to. I love to. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I can't. Not. You see, there's no have to. That, that's, that's implying there's a curse if you don't. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's Old Covenant. Old yeah. Covenant, if you're blessed if you do, you're cursed if you don't. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Deuteronomy 28. All these blessings, if you do everything in the law, nobody can do everything. All these yeah, curses, good. twice as many curses if you read it, Deuteronomy 28. Amen. Twice as many curses, you're cursed if you don't do it all. Nobody could do it all. Thank you for the sacrificial system of killing animals to make atonement with God. Well, all that's gone. The law, blessed if you do, curse if you don't, and the sacrifices, all gone. Jesus fulfilled it all. He said, I did not come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. He fulfilled it and keeping it for you so you don't have to, have to, okay, want to. 
You don't have to, and, and he's a sacrifice so that you don't have to make sacrifices anymore. No have to. No have to. <laughs> Want to. Even Paul said, you know, he said, woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel. Yeah, it's, it's, not it's a spirit it's grieving. It's problem. He's saying, I'm, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Like, woe to me. Like, it's my loss. It's, if I yeah, don't it's a fire that yeah. goes out. You yeah, don't want yeah. that fire going out. Don't let it go. Mm -hmm. I don't let people put my fire out. Man, man, it feeds my fire. You want? You ask a question, you want to know about this, and you kind of don't agree with that. Don't agree. Listen, the Bible says that you have let the traditions of men make the word of no effect. Lose tradition. If you're old wine skin, I can't give you nothing new. Okay, yeah. you got to open yeah. up and be receptive to what I got to say because I can back it up a hundred ways. Amen. Okay, right and you will love it if you learn it. Mm. If you're if you're teachable, mm. you'll love it. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to sit mm. in your little mode and resistant, and you're going to doubt and go without rather than just believe and receive. Yeah. Okay, and that, that's the deal. And a lot of people like that. They fight grace. They hate grace. And the Bible talks about that. On, on it was a, 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 he gives this allegory. They hate grace for others, but they want it for yeah. themselves. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's what I like to tell people. You know what? You know what the Bible says. The Bible says you put un. Uh, he talks yep. talking about the religious leaders. He says you put unnecessary loads on other people that you yourself won't carry. Yeah. And just before that, he says you you don't you don't practice what you preach. Right. So that's what he's talking about. Putting unnecessary loads on people you don't keep yourself. And when people preach, now look, I know this this is, this goes against the grain, mm -hmm. but but. I'll tell Reject. you this, when people say that you have to confess your sins, okay, to stay forgiven or to stay cleansed or to stay right with God, okay, you know what they're doing? They're putting unnecessary loads on you that they don't keep. They don't confess every sin. They're lying. Either they don't know what sin is or they're lying. Okay? Because nobody confesses every sin. So now you're categorizing sins. Yeah. Oh, the biggies! Oh, I do. I, I feel bad when I sin. Will you know when I have a certain sin struggle and I can't get victory over it, and I'm like, and I, I'll tear up and I'll say, I'm sorry, God, I, I need help here. Yeah, it's yeah. a father and son relationship. It's not ritualistic Amen. confession, that a no, bar no. of soap that keeps me clean. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's not like that. <laughs> Fuller soap. Right. Are you getting this? Yes. Yeah. And I could, that's a whole other Bible study talking about the confession of sin because that's only one verse in all the new covenant, all the new covenant, one verse, one place, only by one author. And Paul never mentioned confession of sins. If it was that important, if you really had to keep doing that to stay right with God, you know what? Paul would have talked about it within 13 letters mm. to those Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And it's not there. Mm -hmm. Peter doesn't mention it, first, second Peter. Mm -hmm. James doesn't mention it. Mm -hmm. Jude doesn't mention it. Mm -hmm. well, it's only James, mentioned. James says confess your sins one to another. One to another. Mm -hmm. And Paul said to confess with your mouth, Christ is Lord. Mm. But nowhere does it talk about confessing your sins to God to get forgiveness and cleanse of unrighteousness. Mm. So what is that? I'll tell you what it is. It's what the tax collector said, did when he said, have mercy on me, a sinner. Yeah. And he mm. went home justified. Right. That's you coming to God saying, I'm a sinner. I need a savior. And then you get cleansed, forgiven, and cleansed of all unrighteousness. Once. And you have Once right standing with God. Period. Yeah. That's why you got to read it. Yeah. Do you, if you find yourself having fallen into sin, have a problem with then confessing your sin? Yeah. Okay. Well, if you're not grieved, something's wrong with you. Because if I, sin doesn't bother you, there's something wrong. We can't, yeah. we can't take away 1 John, can we, where yeah. it says, if we confess our sins, um. he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <laughs> So, you know, bring but that's us the balance. That sand, see, that's sandwiched in between two things that no Christian would ever say. Have you noticed that? Which is what? He says, if you say you have no sin, uh -huh. you're calling God a liar. Yeah. If you say you have no sin, <laughs> then you're, you're deceived. Right. And sandwiched in between those statements that no Christian would ever say mm. is if you confess your sin, if you can admit yourself a sinner in need of mercy. Mm-hmm. Then you can get forgiven and cleansed all orange. Those are two things that no Christian would ever even say. So it's written to non-believers. He's right. Yeah, people think that because listen, when you read the Bible and you see these letters to the Christ, to the churches, mm -hmm. people automatically think it's all to Christians. But let me ask you: when you stand and pastor goes up here and gives a sermon, does is he re speaking to only Christians? No. Is it, no. You know what? He, he at the end of the service he asks anybody who wants to accept Jesus as Lord, come on up and we'll get you saved. Dude, he's not just talking to Christians. <laughs> yeah. He even, be, he even begins it. You can look at it. He even begins it saying, uh, we're here inviting you into the fellowship that we have with the Father and the Son. Right there tells you he's not talking just to Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, if he's inviting you, because we have the fellowship with the Father and the Son. We have that. Yeah. That's a believer. But he's saying, we're inviting you into this fellowship. It says that at the beginning of 1 John. Read it. Mm -hmm. 
He's not just talking to Christians. He's talking to Gnostics. Dude. He's talking to Gnostics, Judaizers, anybody, anybody who's not keyed into what it really saves you. That's why it's one verse, and it's there because he, Paul is saying the same thing. Well, when he says he says that if you if you those who work not, but believe on him who justifies the ungodly, huh, your faith is credited to righteousness. It's your faith. So now, if you're saying it's your confession, you're missing right before right before he mentions confession, right before he goes into that little subject, he says it's the blood of Jesus that forgives you of your sins. It's the blood that does not, not your confession, not your little okay. spiritual bar. So well, just like on on the, the day that Jesus was being crucified, there's those two criminals, and the one does not say, "Forgive me of my sins." He said, "Lord, remember me." Yeah. Mm. He didn't sit there and oh, say, forgive me. Yeah, he, he didn't yeah. sit there and say, forgive me in my sin. I accept you as my savior, yada, yada. He just said, so he, it showed faith that he believed that Jesus was going to heaven. Yeah, right. He believed he was the Not promised Messiah. Well, was he me. confessed that he was a sinner and that he said that we're here for well, what we've done. For what we've right. done. But he again, he did not sit there he, and say to Jesus, yeah. forgive me of my sin. No, you don't you need become to my savior. Yeah, He didn't go through what we call the sinner's prayer. Yeah. He showed faith in the fact by saying, Lord, when you go into that's a big, remember me. That's how I see First John. Mm. Okay, this is my this is my, my the way Jesus I see the way I see First John is it. Late, you don't get to be baptized. So I, like baptism I was, was oh, right. Go ahead. Yeah. What's your name? Sandy. Sandy. Yeah. So, I, Rich, I was kind of thinking what you're saying. So, are you saying, Henry, that we when we mess up, we don't need to we don't need to confess our sins and say, Lord, like forgive me of. You never need to say and, forgive me for something that's already forgiven. Okay, Jesus but is the forgiveness of sins. Sorry, and say I I confess this sin and and I know that you're. Like your blood covers let me, me. Let me put it like this, okay? Look. He's daddy. Okay. And I'm his child. Right. And I'm growing. Right. And I need help in a lot of areas, and I'm yeah. going to fail in a lot of areas. Right. And you talk to him like a father. So you can say you you're just sorry. get living. Yeah, oh, just I say do. You're sorry. Okay. Right. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying when you get ritualistic and say, well, because I hear people all the time say, well, when I say, well, you just confess it, confess it, confess it, confess it, confess it, confess it. Oh, I like you got, yeah. and then people get this impression like they did the Catholic Church. Uh, they I blow see. it out of the water. Right. And, 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 yeah, a lot of people coming in the church, coming out of Catholic Church, and that's the impression you're giving them. That's why I'm adamant against that, because I came out of Catholic Church, and I know that impression that you have. Mm -hmm. It puts, it, it makes you think that I have to appease this wrath of God by my confession. That's not the deal. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And that's the impression people give from John one, from First John one nine, is that I have to somehow work my way back into His good graces through my confession. That's not the deal. But it, well, you I, do, you do. I feel, Henry, you're saying something else, which is another like religious word is repentance. Okay. And people say repentance is also not just saying I'm sorry. I mean, we can keep saying I'm sorry, but like if your kid keeps on saying to you, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and they keep doing the wrong thing, I say do that with my wife a lot. And she's like, you're not sorry. Like, yeah. basically, like if we're really sorry, if we're really repentant, if we really, are, if the sin grieves us, as you're saying, we will stop doing it. We will change our mindset and our lifestyle, right? We will, we will change, and we me, will stop me, saying "I'm sorry." All let the me. Time. When I first came to the Lord, I was in jail, okay, and, and I got caught. I was busted, okay. And, and I wasn't sorry for what I did. You need a bigger table. I wasn't sorry for what I. I was not sorry for what I did. Yeah, yeah. I was sorry I got caught. Right. And, and, yeah, okay. <laughs> Right? There was no, rep what people think, you got to be sorry for your sin, you got to be, you know, sorrow. And, you know, the Bible actually puts a difference. It says your godly sorrow led you to repentance. There's yeah, a difference. Yeah, yeah. People are trying to make this that. It's not. Mm. But in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, he says your godly sorrow. I'm glad, I, I was sorry I had to write that letter, 1 Corinthians, but I'm glad now because you, you, it worked for you. Your godly sorrow brought you to repentance. There's a difference. Yes, amen. It's not the same thing. So when I got caught, I wasn't sorry for nothing I did. I was sorry I got caught. And I cried out to the Lord. I said, Lord, help me. I need help. He heard me. Thank you that you're using this to come to me. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Repentance is anywhere that you change your mind about God. I, the repentance is going on all the time. When I go into jail ministry and I start preaching these guys a God that they never knew. Mm -hmm. Blowing their mind on a God that loves them that much. Okay. It's already just, you know, Jesus took a responsibility for every sin you've ever made. Or ever will make. Yeah. If you can believe it. You gotta believe it. 
And, and that's what I teach. And I see repentance going on all the time because now they're falling in love with this. Got, the, the, the classes are growing. Mm -hmm. That's repentance. Mm -hmm. When you change your mind about God, if I can change your mind about God, when you think you've got to appease his wrath and you've got to work your way back in his good grace or he's still mad at you or he's still holding your sin against you, mm -hmm. if I can change your mind about that and you start, dude, that's repentance. Mm -hmm. It's a change of mind that leads to a change of action. That's Amen. repentance. Amen. And it's going on all the time in churches that are preaching the true gospel. I mean... That's what yeah. you had even mentioned about your children. I mean, well, with I don't us, we don't, we don't need yeah. a child of ours to come to us and, oh, please forgive me. Yeah. What we want to mm. see is that they, that they do, yeah. you know. They show their sorry. Yeah, they're showing their <laughs> sorry by not, do it, not continually doing yeah. it again. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no way that we as, you know, flawed humans love these children more than God loves us. We're his children, you know? And I was recently talking to a friend of mine and she was all concerned about something that her son was doing. So I said, let's not talk about your son. Let's talk about your daughter who you're not worried about right now. But we all know your daughter has quite an attitude. She was like, yeah. <laughs> At what point with that attitude does your daughter stop being your daughter? When are you gonna find yeah. the writer off? Yeah. You know, she's like, I wouldn't write her. Right. Well. Same with God. He's never going to write your son off. You're not going to, you know, you're concerned about your son. You want to see him. Well, if you're that concerned, how concerned do you think God is? You know? And you, your heart's grieving. God's heart's grieving. But, you know, God is not to ready to give up on you. He'll leave the 99. Yes, there, exactly. We, we are, I know mm. we the are one. definitely <laughs> talking about two different things. One is no, 99 are good. Uh, where, who we are <laughs> positionally, Damn. what we have been, you know. That's where I was going to go. God has, you know, we've identity. been born again. We have that identity. Yes, we, and, and I, I would say the greater of the problems is that most Christians just can't get that or haven't gotten it. And the enemy would like to take that away from him, and do, and he does. Yeah. That said, we still, in my opinion, in my the way I perceive the scripture, is that, and I, I'll use the example that you called and asked Dylan to, hey, yeah. I was talking to you wrong. I feel bad about it. I'm sorry. Uh, it's a it's an element of transparency to him, and also, in my for me my heavenly father that I can come and say, oh man, I messed that one up. Doesn't change who I am. Mm -hmm. Doesn't change his love for it me one way or the other. It could change your love for him, but it doesn't change his love for you. Right. Mm -hmm. No, that's what, I, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah. It, it does, I'm in a state of humility and not one of, oh, hey God, uh, you know, you, I know you forgave me for that sin, so what's the difference? You know, if you have a son or a child who takes that attitude, and I and I have had sometimes with some of my children, they'll they'll take on that attitude in a scenario where they're acting like, "Oh, Dad, it's not that big a deal." Mm. You know, you immediately your attitude goes, "Oh, I gotta," you know, I might have to chastise my my kid here, and the, and the Lord talks about chastising us too, mm -hmm. it's because we are His children. No, no child that the Lord loves will go without chastisement. Mm -hmm. And that's where you were talking about the Holy Spirit spoke to you, Henry, and said, hey, I got to talk to Dylan. Yeah. I need to, because I, I talked to him badly. And that's it. And, but I know Dylan, because I know Dylan well enough, he's not tripping. <laughs> okay, you know, and that's how it is, has to be with God. I can confess and all that, but understand that at the same time, he's not tripping. But you know, sometimes our brothers and sisters do trip. Yeah, but I'm, I'm talking about, we're talking about God here, and that's what's huh? important to understand. You have that as we trip a listen, lot. Listen, yeah, we all trip a lot. Some God look, look, stumbling. you take Romans chapter four, Romans chapter four, verse four and five, and put that next to John one nine. Put that next to John one nine, and you're going to see what I'm talking about, okay? Because here's the thing: you got to separate your who from your do. You are a child of God. You are. That's your identity. Your, your, your who from your do. Who your you do. are. <laughs> your who you are. Who do? From what you do. You are not what you do. Dylan, if he was my son, this is my son. I am proud of him. 
He's my boy. He's a little me. I love him. Nothing he could do could ever change Wait, that. He's, bigger. he's literally your son. I love. Oh, no, I'm just saying. Oh, I don't know. No, <laughs> I'm saying that nothing, here. nothing he could do, nothing he could do, nothing he could ever do to change my love for him, my heart for him, what, who he is to me. Mm -hmm. Nothing can change that. Mm -hmm. He may do some wrong things, and I'll work with him on that. And he may feel bad about it and talk to me about it. Beautiful. But that's gotta be that's that's what you that's how you gotta see it. It's a relationship. It's not ritualistic confession. Mm, no, I get no. it's not a bar of soap that keeps you clean. <laughs> it's it, it's not. No, no. And that's what no people don't get. Yeah, that's right. Cause listen, you take Romans four, four and five. Now to him who works, the wages are counted as grace, but as debt. Now look. Now to him who does not work. But believes on him who justifies the ungodly, that's me, un okay, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now let me tell you, if my faith makes me righteous, it's a gift. He just gives it to me because I put my faith in him making me ungodly, just making, giving me right standing, just uh, justifying me. And now if my faith is credited to righteousness, well then how could I be unrighteous? Mm. How could I be unrighteous? So when you tie confession in with forgiveness and staying clean, can forgiveness and cleanse of all unrighteousness in some ongoing thing, where is my righteousness? It's only in him. Where is my righteousness? Yeah. Uh, it's contradicting. You see? Yeah. Yeah. But he I says he, he I, credits uh, you for righteousness. You're righteous. Bam, I just gave it to you because of your faith. You believe I took you, you ugly, nasty, perverted, messed up. Oh. Dude, if you only knew how much of a sinner you the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Mm. We don't even know how bad it is. Mm. That's what the Bible says. Mm. Yeah. The heart, your heart is desperately wicked mm. and, 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 uh, you're, and de de your heart is deceitful and desperately wicked above all right. things. And, mm. and, and, uh, who can know it? Who can know it? Who can know it? That means you, nobody, know, you, nobody has a clue how bad they are. Yeah. And I take that and I justify the righteousness. And you who believes in me to do that. I give you righteousness as a gift. That's faith in grace. Okay, and that's where your righteousness comes from. It doesn't come from my confession, keeping me righteous. Uh, uh, it doesn't come from my confession, yeah. getting me forgiveness. Yeah. I am forgiven. I have been cleansed. Mm. More than that, he became sin for me that I might become the righteousness of God in him. Mm. Mm. I am righteous. Wow. Armor I'm not righteous, yeah. unrighteous. Yeah. I'm not born again, again. I'm not righteous, unrighteous. I'm not saved, unsaved. You're a child of God, and it's a one-time thing. It, 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 that's what the Bible calls. There, 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 there's, there, there's, there's, just, there, there's justification, sanctification, glorification. Three Ps. You're saved from the penalty. Bam. No penalty for your sin. Saved from the penalty. That's justification. Okay, and that's where you're saved. Done deal. One time. Okay. Well, it's like like our own yeah. fathers. I mean. Your dad is your dad, and no matter how much you mess up, he's still your dad. Yeah. You don't, yeah. Yeah. Be, one day you're his yeah. child, and one day you're not, and one day you're back to being his child. You're always his child. Amen. Always. Yeah. Mm. Your identity yeah. never he changes. He wants you to know dad. that. Yeah, amen. That he is daddy. Always. Yeah. And, and, and you're locked into that. Yeah. He locked you in. About like Noah, when he went into the boat, it says God closed the door, locked him into that boat. Yeah. And notice Noah in a wooden boat. Jesus and the cross, okay? You see how, um, you, yeah, you see how the, the doorposts, wooden doorposts, blood on the doorposts, kept the angel out in, e in Egypt, right? Jesus, the blood of Jesus and the cross, the wood, see? When, when, the, when the water was, was, was bitter and, and Moses and the people couldn't drink it because it was bitter, God told Moses, take this log, wooden log, throw it in the water and it'll become sweet. That's the cross of Jesus, makes, turns our bitterness into sweetness. Mm. Uh, uh, right? And do I need to go on? There's a lot more. Isaac, <laughs> Isaac was carrying the wood up the hill yeah, yeah. while Moses, uh, uh, while going. Abraham carried, carried the flint and the knife. Isaac carried the wood. That's Jesus carrying the cross up the hill for us oh. to or, sacrifice or, or himself. In, in the um, wilderness, when they would look upon the staff, remember, with the serpent. The serpent. And they looked upon it, and, and they wouldn't die. Yeah. yeah. That's good. And again, they were looking at this cross and, and putting faith in it, and they would not be they were justified. killed. They were, right. they, they were saved from the serpent's bite. Yeah. God. It was faith it was, in again, that, to believe. You, you, put, to, you look up, you mm -hmm. keep your eyes up here, yeah. and you have faith. 
and I'm the serpent's not It's that simple. Henry, I'm remembering something. I think, I think maybe Pastor yeah. Paul says that. He has a lot of, you have a lot of real cool catchy phrases, but I remember someone said, <laughs> justified is like just <laughs> as if I'd I never, never sinned. Sin. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, not and now I kind of understand yeah. that because cool. we need to walk, and I think somewhere in the scripture says we walk as a Christian, or like we, you probably know where, it's like we walk as we are. Yeah. Like walk in him as, I can't think of the verse spell, but like walk in, walk as a Christian, basically walk as who you are in mm-hmm. Christ. Yeah. Be there. I, I don't know, you know what I'm talking about, it's in 1st I heard you say, well, well, yeah, well, that's sanctification. And yeah. there, there's justification, that's yeah. where you're saved yes, from the penalty. Yes, yeah. And the second P, there's three P's, penalty, power, and, 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 and presence. Since yeah. penalty, yeah. since power, since presence. Okay, that's the three P's. That's justification, sanctification, glorification. That's three parts of salvation. The part that's already done deal that makes you a child of God that you are in and you're staying in, that where well, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit, where well, you don't have to fear any punishment, where well, you are his child, a child of God, where well, you are one with Christ and complete in him, that 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 you that's is you. Okay? <laughs> then there's sanctification, which has to do with your mind. My mind isn't perfect. The, over the period of your uh, My life. mind is still polluted. There's a lot yeah. of junk that I still need to break free from. Yeah. Okay, and that's my mind. That's sanctification process where I'm becoming more Christ-like. Okay, I'm becoming... That, that's life. where, Yeah, yeah. And, and that's where I'm getting my... Here's how it goes. Yeah. That's where I get my mind tuned into who I am in the spirit. This is a done deal. Body, mind, but now spirit. let me get my mind through the word of God and through uh, sitting under some good yeah. new covenant preaching, helping you understand not yeah. just what it says, but what it means. Okay, then, then I can get tuned into who I am in the spirit, and that's where you live that out. That's sanctification. And then there's glory. That's where sin's power is still present. Yeah. But I died to it. Right? The Bible says, we die. how can we who, who died to sin live in it any longer? He's talking about you died to that sin nature. Much of where Paul talks about sin, he's talking about the nature of sin. Mm-hmm. It's not sin. It's sin is still very real power. But I died to that nature. That's not me. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. And the life I now live is all by faith. And what he did for me, Amen. his love for me, he died for me. It's not what I do. It's what he did. Exactly. Yeah. Well, what are the three P's again? Wait, can, okay, good. Go slower. Okay, all right. I know you're excited. P, P, P. P uh, penalty. The penalty. I'll help you. That's justification. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Justification. Power. Sanctification. Sanctification. I got it. Okay. Presence of sin. That's glorification. That's where yeah. you're going to step into God's world and your sin don't go with you. Wait, presence of sin? The presence. The presence right now, the sin knowledge. is very present. When you're in oh, heaven, there's no sin. Present time. When you go sin. to heaven, sin's not... There's no sin in heaven. Your sin issues right. you're having right now? Yeah. You'll be gone. They're not going to be there. So why the presence? I don't get it. His presence. Sin's presence. Sin's presence. Sin's presence. Oh, sin won't be present Sin's with presence. You. The presence of sin. The, the yeah. Yeah. With there's a penalty. There's a penalty for sin. God, God. You there's won't a pe- be sinning there's in heaven. Not the power. There's yeah. power of sin, and then there's a presence of sin. Sin's presence. You're not going to sin in heaven. There's no sin in heaven. Why is sin present if there's no sin in heaven? If there's no, you're saved from the presence. Well, that, yeah. and that, oh, me, you're saved from the saved. presence of sin yeah. I got in your life. Saved, saved, saved. There's three parts of salvation. Basically, you're saved. God. That's a done deal. Basically you're God. being saved. <laughs> And then okay. you're going to be saved from the it. sin's presence. Sin, I, you won't have any struggles with sin. There's going to be some sifting process where the, the sin issues okay. aren't going with you me. You kind of went negative on me, so. But, but basically, you can also say it's the presence of God because where God is, sin cannot exist. Yeah. Right. right. But God sees you there already. Right. Oh, so. That's good. You're sitting oh, in heavenly that, places. I found that verse. <laughs> I got to read that. First John 2, 6 is what I was looking for, Henry. It says, he who says he abides in him, which is what you're talking about, basically. Because um, when we were justified, we were put into Christ, and that, that's a done deal, right? Yeah. In Christ in us, we're in Christ. This is he who says he abides in him, ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Yeah. That's the verse I was thinking about. Yeah. So All those who have that hope purify we themselves. We, we, just, we just walk as who we are in Christ. Yeah. No, we don't want a spiritual dyslexia. That's good. No spiritual dyslexia. Yeah. Yeah. Let me underscore one point, and that is, is that I, I, it's an I, 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 first of all, I want to say thank you because I don't know, I'm tired. you know, when I have ever heard such accurate teaching about the grace mm. of God mm. wow. and where it puts us mm. positionally. Mm. I think that's incredibly important for us. Yeah, yeah. There's only one thing that I think I, that I want to add to that that trumps it. Okay. Uh, and that is relationship. I think we need this to have the relationship. 
but the re we that and it and it actually brings us into that relationship with him. Uh, what I would have a problem with, maybe nobody else would have this problem, but if I get, if I personally get too much about my position, uh, I, I personally could find myself in an area of arrogance or pride uh, and, and that son that I was trying to describe earlier, that child who says, oh, you know, it becomes proud or arrogant mm. about something. Mm -hmm. Whereas, if we keep that position and, and in it focus on the relationship, mm. and that is, you know, seeing God and getting to know Him, getting to know Jesus, we will never, I don't think, find ourselves in a place, or I, I wouldn't find myself in a place of arrogance and, uh, oh God, you know, it doesn't, matter you know and, and I know I know that I ha I do have a tendency to want to want to become proud mm -hmm. you know spiritually it's proud. always been important yeah, yeah spiritual absolutely mind. spiritually like, like and, I've made it yeah exactly holy yeah or, very, and very much about you know this now. life that we have here you know I want I, you know my power my position my title my you know uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm better than this person or that person you know mm -hmm. and, and so I, that's I, always going to be there. Pride is always a. Uh, uh, that's always going to be a problem. That's, that's, that's always part of be a problem. my sanctification, right? But yeah, your that's, humbleness, that's, that's your humbleness, be a problem, cause, cause, overpowers that. Well, well here's the thing. Yeah, here's the which thing. Comes, which hopefully comes from a relationship. Well, exactly. Paul, right. Paul said. Paul said in. Uh, 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 Paul said in uh, <laughs> Second Corinthians. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter five. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter twelve, where Paul talks about his thorn in the flesh. Yeah. He said, I was, he's, he had amazing revelations, like we're getting right now. Amazing revelations about God. You're, yeah. you're getting that right here. Yeah. Okay? And he had a bunch of those. Okay? He, he, he saw Jesus on the road to Damascus. He was personally taught by Jesus. He got a tour of heaven. He just got done talking about this tour of heaven. He went and saw the third heaven. He saw heaven. Mm -hmm. And he said, it was amazing. I, boy, I can't even talk about it. I was restricted on how much I could say. And he says, but because of this abundance of revelations, I was given a thorn in my flesh mm -hmm. to keep my pride in check. Even Paul struggled with that. Mm. So that's something you're always going to struggle with. And he, he, said to keep, and he said it twice. He said, he said again. He said to keep me from being exalted above measure. To keep me from being proud. He was given this thorn in the flesh. A messenger. A demon. By Satan. From Satan. <laughs> he was allowed a demon to trouble him. We don't know what that is for him. But I know I've got my issues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amen. Okay, mm -hmm. Amen. and I thank yeah. God that I can thank God. I can say, wow. you know, when I'm weak, I'm strong because right. I recognize the weakness and I know it's good. an issue. That's but good. you know what? Maybe you're allowing that in my life. So I don't think I'm better than rich. Wow, that's good. Wow. Yeah. So I know I got my own issues. It yeah. keeps you in your place. I know. Yes. I thank you for I can say. Wow, that's good. Your grace is sufficient mm. for that. Right. That's and so I can good. focus on your grace. Amen. Right. That's so good. You know, yeah. Yeah. that reminds yeah. me, there, yeah. there was a writer called Fanny Crosby. <laughs> and, I don't know, um, Henry, I don't know if you, there's a, there's a yeah, hymn writer okay. called Fanny Crosby, mm -hmm. and she and she may not be the only one, but she wrote, you guys might have heard, like, Blessed Assurance. Jesus, mm -hmm. yeah. She was blind. Yeah, oh. right, true. That, that's something, that could be a thorn, like, you know, that is humbling. Sure. As, yeah. as spiritual as she became, she was blind, yeah. and that's what yeah. the Lord will do to people. And then also, um, Henry, as you're speaking, I'm reminded of, I wasn't sure what you meant by position, but like, of course, worldly position, that's not a spiritual thing, but even spiritual position or that we think we're somebody in the house of God. I'm thinking of the uh, older brother in the prodigal son story mm. and how he, he just took it for granted. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason why is he didn't have, a, I mean, we don't know, but it doesn't sound like he treasured that relationship with his father. He was just in the house. I got it all. You know, he yeah. had everything. Yeah. And, and when he sees his younger brother come, he's like, why are you taking out everything for him? And he's like, and the father's like, you get this every day. <laughs> you know, you get, you get eggs and bacon every day. You know, this guy's been eating with the pig. You know, mm. you know and so that he said, all that I have is yours. yours. Amen. Right. And he right? said, so I've he never. Wasn't, he wasn't living in his position. And he had the same attitude. He had the same attitude. He had the same attitude. He divided the living in the beginning. They divided the living. He had he had the same attitude. He had the same attitude as the tax collector and the Pharisee. The tax collector, the Pharisee, 
the, the, the Pharisee portion. and the tax the collector, he brother. said, thank God I'm not a sinner like him. Right. And that was the, that was the older brother's attitude. <laughs> yeah. Thank God, I, I would have ne right. I've never broken one single one of your commandments. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm not yeah. like him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing in, in 1 John, where he says, if you say you have no sin, mm -hmm. yeah. you call you call God a liar. It's, it's the same deal across the board. And the problem is, we're all sinners. The problem is that both sons were flawed. Both yeah. sons were missing right. it. Yeah. The only one who wasn't missing it was the father. And, and the, the point in the story, the point what a lot of people miss in that story is Jesus giving you a contrast with what the Father God is like and what, huh, what's, what, what the opposite of God is. What's demonic? Yeah, you what's demonic? Either son the, can be wrong. Who mentioned the sin in that story? The older brother. The older brother. The father didn't. He ran to him. Didn't even mention the sin. That's God with you. He ain't looking at your sin. He says, eyes on me. He's like, I'm just He's like, you want to look at the home. storms, you're going to sink. Eyes on me. That's good. That's good. I'll pull you right out of that mess you're in. Yeah. Eyes on me. That's what happened to Peter. Pulled him right out when he eyes back on him. He doesn't see our sin when he sees yeah. the blood. Mm. Yeah. So, right. so, like what you're saying, he yeah. sees that, is that serpent. He sees that. That would, that's why that's why in that story it, it says they killed a fatted calf. What does that represent? Sacrifice. Bloodshed. Mm -hmm. So let's kill the fatted calf. Let's throw a party. Party time. Blood, without the shedding blood, no, no remission of sins. Yeah. Right. That's what that calf represents. That's a whole. And, 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 and it was the brother who, made, who was angry. God isn't angry at you. He's not mad at you every time you sin. He's not mad at you. He knew you were going to do it before you ever did it. Yeah. He right. knew every sin you were going to commit before you were born again. Yeah, right. And it says, how much more is he for you now that you're born again? Mm. More for. Mm. And, then, and it was older brother, he was angry, he mentioned his sin, and he didn't want no fellowship. People say you're out of fellowship if you're not here. He's not angry, but he's grieving. The Holy Spirit grieves. When we no, I'm talking about the older brother. Okay. He was angry. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He was angry, the father wasn't. He didn't want fellowship, the father did. He mentioned the sin, the yes. father didn't. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 He's painting you a picture between what is and what isn't when it comes to God. And what the father wanted the most was relationship. Amen. Amen. He wanted relationship. Yeah. And yeah. It, 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 you could almost see that that pride in the older brother too would, yeah. it, would be a, an obstacle of fellowship as well, right? Yeah. It was well, keeping him from evil. being a part of the party. Mm. Yeah, the well, father went out to him and was like, don't do this. Come, you know, come to you, the party. You guys familiar with that story? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like to, because God shows me things. And God, I like to find Jesus in the story. When I read the stories, like Jesus is a good Samaritan who pay, overpaid the debt. You know, for at the end of the story, the good Samaritan, he overpaid the debt. He says, whatever his bill comes up more than this, put it on my account. That's what Jesus did for you and your sins. Overpayment. That's a picture of salvation. That whole picture, if you look at that Good Samaritan story, look for salvation in there. Him trading places with him. That's Jesus taking your sin and giving you his righteousness. He put him on the horse and he walked. That's, it's all salvation. And he even ends the story saying, I overpaid for your sin. Okay, but then in the story of the prodigal son, check this out. Let's see if you can relate to this. Now, I like to throw a third son in there. A son who shared the father's heart. Okay? A son who wasn't content to just see the father's pain and suffering, watching his, thinking about his son probably dead somewhere, laying in a gutter. Is he okay? Is he alive? Is he lost? Mm. Where is he? You know, I wasn't comfortable with seeing his pain. Wow. So he says, Father, send me. I'll go get him. Oh. Isn't that what Jesus said? Go read Romans chapter 10. He mm. says, I asked that I go and mm. save them. Mm. Romans, uh, Hebrews chapter 10 says that, right? Hebrews yeah. 10. He says, I'll go. Send me. Yeah. Prepare a body yeah, for me. I'll go. Right? Right? right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. right? So that's a, a brother who cared, who shared the father's heart and says, look, send me, I'll go get him. That's why you don't see the father going to get him. Because that's where the son fits in. Jesus, a son who cares. A son who would take to go and sacrifice his own life and risk to go and save that son. And then he goes and he tells that brother, he says, listen, come on, come on home. Dad, he's not even going to mention you. Said, Matter of fact, I paid your debt. Remember at the beginning, it says that he separated, he, 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 paid, he, he paid, gave both sons, he, he, didn't, and they, he separated, divided, divided, divided it, right? Yeah, well, later. then he gave his for his. Oh, yeah, right, right. Paid for it. Oh, right, right. right. I paid oh, your yeah. debt. Yes. Okay. He's not going to mention your sin, don't worry. He's not even, as a matter of fact, he's, you're killing him. Come home. And that's what Jesus is doing oh, for you. That's, that's, that's what yeah, Jesus yeah, is doing yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, he's, a, he's a son that so shares good. the father's heart. He's not like the second son. He's a son who shares the father's heart, would go and risk his own life to come and, and save you and convince you that the father is not tripping. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. 
You, you need to write a book, Henry. Say, God is, God is not tripping. We are. There you go. You get part of that. God is not tripping. We are. Yeah, yeah. I'll write the forward. That's great. Okay, let me finish up with something, and then I, I got to run. Isn't that good? Anybody want to take a picture of this? These are scriptures. You, you can look at this. We need, we need you can take a picture this way. I brought this. I didn't even go on any of these. This is my Bible I study. I didn't even do it. It happens. Can you type it up? Can you type it up? Yeah, take a picture. Take your. Okay, okay. Take a picture of it. Old school? Okay. Yeah. Old school. <laughs> take a picture of your notes. They're good, man. It rocks. I believe you. <laughs> you, you don't type, I guess. I'll so type the one, maybe I'll type one thing you. I'd like to uh, bring verses. up is that, and I think it goes very well with what you're talking about, Henry, and that is the armor of God. So we have yeah. to put on the armor of God, right? Yeah, right. But Eyes on him. Yeah, right. you, you don't put the armor on and then just sleep in it. <laughs> no. sound very comfortable. When you, you know, when you go to bed yeah. at night, you take the armor off, you go to bed, and you're going to get rid of a place of rest. But when you get up and you're going out to war, you're going out to the battle, you got to put on the whole armor of God. Okay? And what is one of, what is the breastplate? Of righteousness. Righteousness. The breastplate. Yeah, but that never comes off. Of righteousness. Yeah, we should keep that. I, I mean, I, wouldn't, I, I never think, the Bible doesn't, <laughs> biblically, biblically, the Bible says, put it on. It doesn't say take it off. Okay. okay. Yeah. Biblically. Yeah. What I'm trying to bring you to <laughs> is that you, you consciously need to say when you wake up and I'm morning, righteous. I'm putting on the breastplate of I'm righteousness. I'm saved. Mm. Okay. I mean, don't, don't. I have peace with God. That's the shot with the peace. Right? Don't trip on taking it <laughs> off at night and going to sleep. The, the, the point yeah. I'm really trying I'm to make is that <laughs> when you wake up in the morning, put on the whole armor of God, put on that breastplate of the righteousness, remind yourself, Just remind hey, yourself my righteousness is the yeah. righteousness that he gave me. That's what, I think that's I'm what he's putting saying. putting it on. I think that's what he's saying when he's saying uh, oh, you put it on. He's I saying, <laughs> I provided it. This is not holy document. Realize you're wearing it. <laughs> Holy yeah. writ. Acknowledge yeah. who you are in Christ. Because yeah. the Bible also says elsewhere, it says just to put on Christ. And that's what the whole armor is. Yeah. The whole full armor of God is just putting on Christ. Amen. He's the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Jesus is the word made flesh. That's, that's Jesus. Right? Well, you have the shield yeah. of faith. It's the helmet of salvation. That's your salvation. Jesus yeah. is your savior. Yeah. yeah. And even, even the shield of faith is, can, can be said that it's not your own. Because the scripture you quoted earlier, to, to quote it just absolutely perfectly, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I live, but Christ lives within me. And the life that I now live, Amen. I live by the faith of the Son of God, who, who loved me and gave himself Don't forget me. that part. So yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. point being that even the faith that, that, that is given to me, that is from him. You just said it. It's given and so even that shield of faith is him. Um, so let me pray. Let, let me finish yes. with one last thing to let you go with this. Matthew 27, you can go read that. Read Matthew 27. There's a story in there about Barabbas. Oh. And, and Barabbas wow. was a murderer. Wait, where, where is mm. Barabbas' story? Matthew, Matthew, 20, 20, 20, 20, Matthew 27. 27. 27. And, and, and you can read that story. And, and mm. that's what Jesus did for you. He wow. took your place. Mm. It has nothing to do with you. Wow. It had nothing to do with Barabbas. Wow. Matter of fact, I believe, it doesn't say in the Bible, but I believe that that, that cross that Jesus took was for Barabbas. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So he took your cross. And, and that's why you go free, because you just got to believe that that's the deal. That's why it's all faith. You got to believe that, yeah. And, and you might think, well, I'm not a murderer. Yeah, Jesus said, if you even think angry hatred, you, you're already murdered. So, so you are. You're just as bad as Barabbas. The problem is we don't really see. We think we're that bad. We need to see ourselves as Barabbas, if not worse. Because we're, because we're believers now. We know that we're living after the cross. Barabbas was before the cross. Barabbas didn't even see, you know, right? We're living after the cross. We need to know more of how much he did that for me. Right? So. Did, did Barabbas come to the Lord later? No, okay, no, hey, that's I gotta, not about I got to run. Yeah. Let me interrupt. And, and then you, if you all want to continue for, for a few minutes, please okay. go ahead. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our time together. We thank you for your word. We ask that you, uh, our hearts would be open and that it would just sink down mm. deep, Lord, and grow uh, deep roots within our heart, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have quickened the word to our hearts this morning by your Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for who you have made us in you, Lord. We are your, your sons, heirs, joint heirs of the 
of the very throne of God. Uh, Lord, we love you, and mm. we're, we're just so grateful for what you have done for us. Uh, thank you for this Bible study. Bless each one, mm. and uh, mm. bless the pastor, Lord, as he gives the word this morning. Yes, we wish to hear, hear from you again uh, in that meeting, Lord. We thank you for all this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, guys.